Well, the family is disgusted and they feel disrespected. They did not receive any advance notice from the district attorney that the three deputies who shot and killed Andrew Brown will not face charges. My photographer Dave Anderson and I have been speaking with residents here in Elizabeth City about the Andrew Brown shooting. My kids are scared. They fear for me when I go to work. I should never have to feel like that. What did they tell you? Please come home. This was an explosive press conference. Andrew Brown's family says that they only saw one police body cam video and it only lasted 20 seconds. And in the video, they say that you see Brown put his hands on the steering wheel while he's being shot at several times by deputies. And then you have Hurricane Matthew that came through and just raised waters even more, pushing water into the restaurant, toppling everything. Well, if you're feeling blue this morning, so are we. Yeah. <laughs> Tim's suit looks here. like the sky right now. I love it. And you look good as well, Julie. I know. UNC, Duke, Which just one? kidding. Who are you going for? I'm Switzerland and all this. <laughs> neutral. Good morning. I am too. New court documents state the suspected UNC Charlotte shooter may have recorded video of the classroom rampage on his cell phone. Something to know before you fly again, Delta will continue to block middle seats through the end of April. Developing now a private school teacher in Wake County facing a charge of taking indecent liberties with a child. That teacher is now off the job. Person County is where I grew up. This area is known for being conservative and Christian and a bedroom community to Raleigh, Durham. Nearly 40,000 people call this area home. Let me show you what police say happened here. Police say that overnight someone threw a bottle through this window. Of course, it crashed and then it exploded. And look on the inside of this office. Every single wall burned. So educators say that parents and caregivers should set reminders to make sure that they remember that a child is in the back seat. What they can do is they can put their backpack in the back seat. They can leave their phone in the back seat or this this may sound silly, but you can take your left shoe off and put that in the back seat. Yeah, Tisha, this is a bad situation. You can see behind me that crews are cleaning up what's left of this deadly crash. You can see them right now, the trucker service moving this trailer. Steve, Governor Roy Cooper said today that there is enough gas supply to go around, but it's going to take several days for it to get to stations like this where bags are still in the pump. But when you walk over here to the Circle K here on South Sonda Street, there's gas here. This document here explains the complaint the Republican Party has against Governor Roy Cooper. They want him investigated for campaign finance and ethics violations. Since I'm from North Carolina and the movements to the beat seem easy, I gave it a try. Okay, this is tough. This is a very big day for Miss Marcella Thompson. She wants this vaccine and she wants her community in East Durham to see her get this vaccine. And this is where it will take place. You can see that she is speaking with her pharmacist. Authorities say two mass suspects forced their way into the apartment and shot Ellis. That's when a 12 year old in the apartment started shooting back in self-defense. We start with breaking news right now at 10. A police officer killed in a car crash. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Tim Pulliam. Our breaking news crew on the scene in Sampson County tonight. Take a look at this video. The accident happening near the intersection of Northeast Boulevard and Dixon Street in Clinton. The Newton Grove Police Department now saying it was one of their officers who was killed in the crash. Tim Pulliam joining us now anchoring our coverage on the shooting of Brown from Elizabeth City and Tim, you've been there through the protest and all right with that community and pain. What's the feeling tonight? Andrea, the feeling here in Elizabeth City is heartbreak and frustration. During the funeral, the family thanked the community for rallying around them. For the past 12 days, there have been peaceful demonstrations and marches throughout Elizabeth City since Andrew Brown's death two weeks ago. People are tired of seeing and hearing headlines of black people being shot and killed by law enforcement, period. Now, Reverend Al Sharpton delivered the eulogy. He made it clear today that accountability is next. Don't confuse the celebration with the determination to get justice in this matter. This in Elizabeth City is disgraceful and shameful. Yet now, after the funeral, doves were released into the sky honoring Brown's life. The family is expected to watch the rest of those body cam videos very soon. I'm told from attorneys that it could happen as early as Wednesday.
Pam, you also spoke exclusively with members of Brown's family. I'm sure they are hurting tonight. What did they tell you? Absolutely, Andrea. This was an emotional, raw interview. I spoke with three generations of Andrew Brown's family, his paternal grandmother, his aunt and first cousin. And they talk about him being a family man, the family comedian, and they also address those drug warrants. They say that that did not give deputies the right to shoot and kill him. He deserved his due process in court. I was immediately sad and, to be honest, a little bit angry. I was angry as well because I just felt like this shouldn't be, you know, we should not be here looking at him, you know, in a casket. For what? I get into a panic mode when I think what he must have been processing and thinking and fearing, you know, the fear. I would imagine his first thought was his children because that was his heart. That would have been his first and his last thought, unfortunately. I daydream about it. And I get the daydreaming, and, and and I feel like I just want to float up there in the sky and just be up there floating around, nobody up there but me, not worrying about nothing. Because 92 years old, it's hard to have to put up with something like this. The shooting happening nearly two weeks ago while seven Pasquotank Sheriff's deputies were serving Brown with drug-related search and arrest warrants. The family says Brown was not armed. They believe deputies should not have used that much force because they say although Brown had a record, deputies knew from past experience he wasn't violent. Three deputies remain on paid leave as the SBI and FBI investigates. The police are to serve and protect. They're not to just go in execution style. And we've seen many cases where the police have been beat up, they've had guns taken from them, they've had their cars stolen, batons taken out and beaten, and the people still survive. The family questions the assertion from District Attorney Andrew Womble that Brown's vehicle made contact with deputies before they shot him. The fifth and final shot to the back of the head, according to an independent autopsy. He's gone. And then all I can say, oh, no, no. No. If he made contact, and that's if, let him drive away. You're still shooting him from the back. Yeah. A mouth can say anything. We want to see the tapes. We're going to get justice because, to me, it's, it's no resting until that's done. I asked the family what does justice look like for them, and they responded saying that they, if the officers are charged, they want to see them convicted and in jail for the rest of their life. And I asked them, well, what if that does not happen? What if you do not get the justice you want? Watch their full interview and response on our ABC 11 app. Just go to our website, abc11.com.